Hi guys, Coach Victor Robledo, and I'm here to talk about why you're always injured. Before we get into that, my name is Victor Robledo. If you're new to this channel, this channel is about health and wellness, combining and understanding what true health actually is, because really, you've been lied to. People have been lying to us for a very long time and not understanding how the mind and body work together, and this is what this is about. Let's get into it. So, the whiteboard talk here. Why am I always injured? Now look, I have been weight training. I got my first weight set when I was in middle school. And I've had my own issues with weight training and injuries um, and times in my life where I've encountered significant amounts of injuries. And it comes down to, I'm going to outline it for you. I'm going to talk a little bit about the beast. So I started weight training when I was in middle school. I got my first weight set and I was hooked. I'd never skipped a workout. I was always a little bit on the smaller side. So I wanted to feel strong. And my uncles gave me a weight set and I started working out and it completely changed my life. The problem is that I was addicted to the positive catecholamines that are associated with working out. What does that mean? Well, have you ever heard of an adrenaline junkie? Yes, that's basically what we turn into. And so unlocking the beast was the initial part of it. I found an empowerment. One of the reasons I see a lot of people are getting hurt in any variety of sports is because they get hooked on this feeling, hooked on that feeling of really tapping into an inner potentially stored anger that they get to let out, which was my personal for sure. And also that adrenaline junkie. So Getting addicted to those, that adrenaline, that noradrenaline, then getting that empowerment feeling is a very, is a life changing sensation. However, when you get hooked on that, you got to ask yourself why that's happening. Now we can go deeper down the rabbit hole on another video, but you have to ask yourself if that's the only part in your life where you are feeling this strength, where you are feeling this empowerment, where you are feeling good in the rest of your life, you're feeling like absolute garbage. You got to ask yourself why. So that's one of the big reasons why I tend to see people are injured. They consistently are push pushing themselves and overreaching in the gym, overreaching in any of their athletics. For me, my sort of addiction, and we'll t define addiction as defined by Gabor Mate. If you haven't seen any of Gabor Mate's stuff, blow your mind. In the end, it talks about some levels of addiction and Essentially, our issues associated with attachment from a very young age could create lifelong programs that impact our health and well-being. Now, why is that important? Why am I talking on this channel about emotions? Isn't it supposed to be about strength and adrenal fatigue? Well, I kept going upstream. My research took me farther and farther and farther to help people and help myself. I realized I needed to go farther upstream. They were eating right. They were moving right. Why weren't they getting the results? If you're not getting the results and you seemingly are doing everything right, keep going upstream. And when you go upstream, you start identifying some of these other things that could be impacting your health and wellness. So Gabor Mate talks about addiction. It's anything done to excess that causes negative consequences. Anything done that causes negative consequences and doing it in excess. Well, that was for me, check. It was started off with wrestling. I did it. I was addicted to wrestling in high school. I went to practice, trained, stayed late, went home, trained again. I was addicted. Now, the, pos the positive thing about that is it allowed me to empower myself and I s saw some success. However, there were signs and symptoms back then that I have sort of an addictive personality but it wasn't two things that society in general was frowning upon. So drugs and alcohol, for example, oh, that's bad. Addictions to exercise and sport, not so bad for most people. At least it's not interpreted that way. I then took my addiction to that and put it into the weight room. The whole time I was working out, um, I really jumped it up as I lost wrestling in college. I started to really add levels of intensity um, and trying to gain as much knowledge as possible. And that's changed my what I was studying in my upper, divi or upper division. And I started studying health, fitness, and nutrition, changed my major. And again, my addiction grew. But again, it was supported by everything that we saw in society. It's like, wow, you're really good, doing great in school. You really work out. You love exercising. It's good for you. But there were signs and symptoms even then that I was having problems with getting hurt. So one of the big reasons is that it becomes an addiction and you have an excessive personality, you're going to throw excess on everything. And so this isn't about making you feel video, making you feel bad about yourself is saying, Hey, you're just like everyone else in every other part of society, but you're just applying it and seeing some of the challenges 
in life. So what things can you do? I got a couple simple things that'll help you how to avoid those injuries and a couple simple tips on how to per se, let's make sure that you don't avoid those pitfalls associated with injuries. If you want to go deeper down the rabbit hole, you can reach out to me. I do um, coaching and I can take you by the hand and make sure that you don't see those pitfalls and help you understand the programming that I alluded to, to help you see long-term greater levels of health and wellness. So number one, one of the biggest things I've done is uh, listen and track, right? So uh, watch for plateaus in your training. If you don't track your workout and you're just going by, by feel, that's one thing. But the vast majority of us that get really into working out, start tracking every lift, every rep, and that can be also something you do in excess, but also can be an amazing tool because you can float outside your body and kind of look down like, oh, I've been stuck at this plateau for some time. This is where overreaching starts to happen. I start adding volume and more volume, adding more diversity. And what happened with me is I was overreach, 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 start to get a nagging pain, but then I would use my physical therapy background and work on re recovering from that discomfort only to get another small injury pop up. Eventually it ended up contributing to my significant adrenal fatigue that and almost put me in the hospital. So. Listen and track. When you hit a plateau, that's a sign that you got to adjust. Back off a little bit. Adjust rest and recovery. That's one of the biggest things. Number two, if you get hurt, why are you always hurt? If you get hurt, what do you do? Well, one of the biggest problems with that is that people just go, it's all or none, right? We already talk about our excessive nature. If you're a gym rat and you love the gym or you love jujitsu, um, I really jumped into that and saw my significant injuries from that. What do you do? if you do get hurt the biggest thing is it's very simple now you'll go to every physical therapy channel on youtube or there, there's tons of information there to, to gather it the first thing is you want to regain range of motion and then regain strength simple so if you're not if you can't if you want to get back your knees hurt and your knees hurt and you can't squat well can you do a quarter squat and start off with that building the range of motion when you establish full range of motion then start adding resistance do not add resistance before you've acquired that range of motion regain it and then sort of the last thing uh, last couple things here um, is scaling it everything has its ability one of the things that ben patrick i love about ben patrick and knees over toes guy is that he brought a ton of theories which we've been using if you've been in the strength and, and health and wellness for any amount of time we're applying these theories, but he brings it in a palatable manner so that you understand like, hey, you can't squat or you're having knee problems. Let's work on scaling this. So per find a level of progression steps. If you can't do a push up on the floor, well, maybe you can push up off the wall. And if you can push off the wall, then table, then a couch, then look, work yourself lower and lower. So to answer your question, to kind of bring it out, why are you always getting injured? Take a look at your personality, figure out why you're overreaching why you consistently push yourself and then start to evaluate step back and go what is the actual goal with your workouts if the goal is to be the best jujitsu practitioner well that's a slightly different program than potentially someone who's looking to be on stage as a bodybuilder and that's not to say you can't do bodybuilding workouts to help your jujitsu absolutely but if you're pushing yourself to ultimate fatigue in your workouts you're not going to have a whole lot left for the mats, for example, or if you're a runner working yourself to the bone in the gym is probably going to leave you upset. So it's all your workouts and your training should be guided to make you successful. If you're not being successful. You need to reevaluate and decide like, okay, come up with another plan or better yet, go see a coach that can help you. If it's not me, there's plenty of coaches out there that can step outside. And I always use this analogy with clients. And this is a big one that I'll leave you with. When you're this close to the problem, right? You can't see the solution. A coach does a good job of taking a step back and like, hey, what's the goal? Okay, let's do it in this fashion. That's it for today, guys. If you like this, please like and share, subscribe to the channel. Uh, see me for, send me an email for coaching or leave it down in the comments below. We'll set up a consult and I promise to point you in the right direction.